When mastering the hip hinge, it's helpful to know the difference between a hip hinge and a squat. A squat is a lower body pushing exercise. It involves knee and hip flexion and works the quads, aka the front of your thighs, and the glutes, aka your butt. A hip hinge is a lower body pulling exercise. It primarily involves hip flexion, allowing for some knee flexion, and works the glutes and the hamstrings, aka the back of your thighs. Simply put, the squat is a front of body exercise and the hip hinge is a back of body exercise. The hip hinge can be a difficult exercise to learn because many people don't find it to be intuitive. Often when trying to find their hip hinge, people just squat or they bend from their back rather than from their hips. Throughout these exercises, take your time and really concentrate on what muscles you're feeling. Find those hamstrings and bend those hips. If you haven't watched the tall and tight tutorial, I'd recommend doing that before continuing. Get ready to videotape yourself. Stand tall and tight sideways to the camera. Bring your hands up in front of you and chop into your hip flexors with the sides of your hands. Your hip flexors are the muscles inside the crease that forms when you raise your leg. For example, to go upstairs. Let the chop to your hip flexors be a cue that you should drive your hips back. At the bottom of the position, your hips should be slightly lower than your shoulders and you should feel tension in your hamstrings. Your spine should still be in its tall and tight position, even when you're bent over. Drive back up to your standing position by sending your hips forward and squeezing your glutes rather than by snaking up from the spine. When you watch my video, notice that in the bottom of the position, my knees aren't straight. You want your knees to be soft. This will allow you to get your hips further back. You don't, however, want your knees to come forward into an active bend. This will transfer the tension from your hamstrings into your quads and your movement will end up like a squat. Remember, the hip hinge is a back of body exercise. That's where you wanna feel every part of this movement. Make sure that throughout the movement, you keep your back neutral. Check your video. Your back should look the same at the bottom of the hip hinge as it does at the top. The most dangerous way to mislearn the hip hinge is to allow your low back to round on your way down or up. This can lead to disc issues like herniation. This is what people mean when they say that the deadlift, a popular hip hinge, is bad for your back. If you bend your lower back when you hip hinge, you will eventually get hurt. It might take 10,000 reps, but one day you'll reach down to pet your cat and you won't be able to stand back up. I cannot stress this enough. It's better to have a slight arch in your low back than it is for your pelvis to be tucked under. Check your video. Make sure you make a V-shape with your body and not an L-shape. If you're having trouble moving your hips without bending your spine, find an unweighted stick, like a dowel or a broom handle. Hold the stick along your spine so that there are three points of contact, one at your skull, one between your shoulder blades, and one at your tailbone. Hold the stick in the space behind your neck and the space at the arch of your low back. Stand tall and tight. Send your hips back, keeping those three points of contact. If you're bending your back rather than your hips, you'll lose the point of contact along your tailbone or you'll feel your low back flattening into your lower hand. If you feel the stick leaving your upper back, you've probably raised your head. Remember, your neck is part of your spine too and should remain neutral. If you feel the stick leave your head, you're probably over-rounding your upper back, water falling to the ground rather than sending your hips back. If you're having trouble getting your hips back and creating that V-shape rather than the L-shape, or if you're squatting too much, try standing with your back to a wall. Step forward one foot's distance away from the wall and get into your tall and tight stance. Keeping your spine neutral, reach your hips back until your butt hits the wall. Review your video, making sure that your form looks good. If you can't seem to get your butt back into the wall, it might be because your hamstrings are too tight or because you're not shifting your weight back into your heels. Don't worry too much about actually touching the wall. Just make that your aim and see if you can get closer and closer without losing your form. 
you can add a stick to this version of the exercise if you're having trouble keeping your spine neutral. Just make sure the stick is high enough up your back while still touching your tailbone so that it doesn't hit the wall. Another way to learn to get your hips back is to try a handcuff hip hinge. Hold a weight behind your back. I like to use a kettlebell, but any weight that you can grab with two hands will do. Stand tall and tight and use your hips to push the weight back behind you. This is an especially good variation if you tend to round your upper back because the hands behind your back help you to keep your chest pushed out. Finally, if you're too squatty, meaning you bend your knees too much, or if you only feel your quads, you might want to try the handcuff hip hinge on your knees. Get into a tall and tight kneeling position and reach your hips back into the weight, allowing your chest to come forward toward the floor. Taking your knees out of the equation lets you focus only on your hips bending and your weight shifting back so that you can use your glutes to drive forward. If after all of these variations, you still can't feel the difference between your spine and your hips, practice the following two floor exercises. Start with the cat cow. Get on your hands and knees and starting at the tailbone and moving vertebra by vertebra up to your neck, round your entire back toward the ceiling. Then starting again at the tailbone and moving up one vertebra at a time, curve your entire back toward the floor. Do a few reps, really concentrating on what it feels like to move your spine. Now try a glute bridge. Lie down on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Make sure that there's a little bit of space between your low back and the ground. Enough space to squeeze your hand in, but not more. Keeping your spine in that position, use your glutes to drive your hips straight off the floor. Hold for a second at the top, then bring your hips back down to the floor in that neutral spine position. Do a few reps here, really concentrating on what it feels like to move from your hips. See if you can translate this feeling directly into a standing or kneeling hip hinge. There are a lot of ways in exercise to use a hip hinge, from the glute bridge to a barbell deadlift, and it will be featured in some way in all of your workouts. If you've tried all of these modifications and you still only feel your back and not your butt, stop and contact me for more coaching.